I am trying to do HF on a budget. Right. Do I go get the cheap 10 watt HF or do I go get a used 100 watt HF radio? I'm going. Hi, this is James, November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima. I'm here with the professor, Jim in 4 BFR. You want to say hey, Jim? Hey, Jim. <laughs> okay, well, that's perfect. <laughs> A lot of you guys have been asking us, can I ask Professor Jim in 4 BFR? I've been studying with him. I've been looking at him in ham radio prep, but can I ask him my questions? Well, I got some good news. Today, Jim, we are going to ask you the most common questions that people have been asking. This is a little session of Ask the Professor. So you're ready, Jim? I'm ready. Okay, Jim, first question. I'm new to ham radio. I'm working on my license. Why do I need to know electronics? The, the short answer is because the FCC says so. The long answer is in order to be uh, the ham radio service by the FCC, they want several things, including being able to have trained electronics people as part of the FCC universe. So that is a requirement by the FCC that we teach electronics. That's why you have to learn about capacitors and inductors and Smith charts and all those kinds of things as you work your way through the license levels. Now let's say that I'm brand new and I'm getting in my technician license. Is that gonna be tough for me as a newbie getting in with all that electronics? I don't think so. In the early part of the, the course, they're teaching you basics what the what the pieces are so a capacitor stores a charge it's those kind of things that you're learning in the early parts and then later on as you go to extra and general you're picking up more theory and more practical circuit guides okay so you start with level one and you go through it i like and that you go through it. okay next question i'm in one state how do i talk to my family on ham radio in a different state if things go wrong, how do I organize that in, maybe in an emergency situation? Yeah, so you're not gonna be able to do handhelds, right? You're, you're not gonna be able to talk from St. Louis to Wichita on a handheld. You're gonna need to look into getting your family licensed for HF. So that means being at least probably a general license is where you wanna be because technician has limited HF privileges. So get a general license, set up some basic HF gear, and then start practicing couple of times a year, go out and set it up, go to field day, those kind of things. So you're both comfortable with it if something happens. Okay, so it sounds like operating and getting on HF and kind of getting a little poda experience maybe po could poda help. Poda experience yeah. can be great. Uh, go out to field day. Field day. Go out to field day, see how it's done, and then do it yourself. Next question, and we get this one a lot. Yeah. Can I do HF from my apartment? I, had, I don't have a big space for an antenna. Maybe I'm in an, an apartment area, but I want to get it on HF for the high frequency, long range contacts. What do I do, Professor? So, yes, you could do things like a, a vertical antenna off your balcony. I've, I've done that when I was in a, a condo, so that, that could be a good way to do it. You could, string, I've seen, I've heard people and seen people string up uh, uh, dipoles around their room or up in the attic if they have access to the attic. The thing you need to watch out for if you're in an apartment or a condo scenario where a lot of people on top of you are HF exposure. So I want you to read up on the information related to uh, how close can I have an HF antenna to other people so you're not incidentally exposing them to harmful HF radiation. Okay, that sounds good. So it sounds like yeah. we've got some, that, some good options there. And there's now, definitely options. Now, okay. Or I'm trying to get, Here's another option, go out to a park. Just take your stuff out, go to a park, do a POTA activation and double the fun. All right, next question from our students. Mm -hmm. And I love this one. Yep. Jim, yes. I am trying to do HF on a budget. Right. Do I go get the cheap 10 watt HF or do I go get a used 100 watt HF radio? I'm going, so let's say your budget's around 600 bucks, which means you can bucks. get like a, a new radio from Zygu or one new of New radio one from Zygu, okay. Uh, so that is an option. I would personally recommend getting a good used HF radio instead. Okay. Uh, here's the things to look for. Look for something like the Yaesu FT450D, which is not the current generation of HF radio, but it's kind of like the used car version of HF radio. It's been, you know, as hams are upgrading, they're selling off their old gear. That's the kind of gear you want to try and find. 
uh, and you can find it in that price range. So uh, I think that's a good place to start. And the reason I'm saying that is I think if you're trying to do 10 watts, you're gonna handicap yourself a little bit. Um, and, and let's remove the challenge of low power a little bit to get started on HF. If you wanna go all in on, on QRP in the future, that's great, but just take that challenge away at the beginning. And by the way, if you do buy the big radio, you can still turn it down to 10 watts if you want to do it that way. I love that. So yeah, so what I'm hearing is with that 10 watts, it might be a little bit more difficult for a beginner. And if you're able to find something used that's a 100 watt radio that's good, you might have some more success as a beginner. I like that yep. tip. Check estate sales, check with your local club because lots of times they handle estate equipment that's in good shape. Um, and then, you know, I think the auction sites are a little more risky, but that that's an option as well. Or come, like, come to a ham fest and see what people have because th this is my own personal experience. I have, you know, I bought radio, new Radio Y. I have old Radio X that I have available to sell that's usually in really good condition. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, yeah. I am thinking about getting into APRS. Okay. What do I need to think about as far as an APRS handheld if I'm thinking yep. about getting into APRS? Could you give me a little more info on that, Professor? Yep. Or are we stretching it too far for a beginner? What do you think? I don't think we are. I think um, there's two radios I want you to think about. And I don't think the decision is APRS. I think the decision is what digital mode do you want with your APRS? Okay. Because the digital okay. radios, that are out there today, the, the two main ones, both come with a digital mode. So if you're into D-Star or think you may be into D-Star, uh, look hard at the uh, Kenwood TH D75. Okay. If you are interested in System Fusion, then the Azu FT5D is the way to go. If you're not gonna use digital and price is an option, uh, the 5D is about $150 less expensive than the Kenwood, so make your choices based on that. All right, hey, those are some good options. All right, just two more questions for you. Okay. Okay, Jim, what happened to Baofeng Basics? I would, <laughs> in our ham radio prep account, we used to have this thing called yep. Baofeng Basics. I'm going in, I'm not seeing it. What happened and, and what should I be looking out for in my account? We made it better. We made so it better. We made okay. it better. So Baofeng Basics is now called Ham Radio Basics. So if you had Baofeng Basics, you have Ham Radio Basics. If not, it's 25 bucks, come on, check it out. Here's the nice part. We, it's not only Baofengs anymore, so you get, you'll, you'll learn to how to program a handheld. We use two examples now. We use the Baofeng, we use the Yezu FT65. Uh, so you've got multiple ways to understand the things you need to do. And all those principles apply to what you're doing with uh, other radios as well. So uh, even if you decide to buy the Kenwood, a lot of these programming things are still gonna work exactly the same, uh, just maybe called a little bit differently in the menu, but you'll be able to set up your repeater shift and those kind of things. Okay. The, the other piece is that we've added more lessons. So we've added some things no. that allow people to understand more what they wanna do in ham radio. So there's an intro to HF and an intro to Morse code, intro to satellites. So you can't, if you've been thinking about well, what do I, you know, it's not gonna teach you everything you need to know, but if you wanna understand it better to see if it's an area of interest for you, Ham Radio Basics will help you explain that uh, as you watch it and go through the lessons. Okay, this is really good to know. So with the change of Baofeng Basics to Ham Radio Basics, I'm not actually losing anything. No, you're I gaining can, a lot. I'm gaining a lot, I'm getting more lessons, more information, I can still use it with my Baofeng and learn how to program, but Absolutely. now there's more radio supported, now I'm getting an introduction to Morse code introduction to MCOM and new lessons. Yep. Well, thanks for the hard work on that. You are welcome, That man. sounds really good it's because- been, It's been a lot of fun sprucing <laughs> that out. Yeah, I appreciate it. Let's say I'm a ham radio prep student right. and I'm getting into logging my contacts and I, I've, I've completed my tech license. I want to log my first contact. Yeah. I've been seeing this thing called World Radio Leak. Yep. Is this the same as my ham radio prep account or what do I do if I want to get so, involved here? As you, as you can see by our shirt, ham radio prep and World Radio Leak, we're all one big happy family. <laughs> so. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, you'll know all the same people and deal with all the same support people if you uh, make your way over to use the World Radio League logger. 
Uh, right now, we do not have single sign-on for both Ham Radio Prep and World Radio League. So you'll have to set up a separate account, but it's so easy because you can just click sign up with Google or sign up, is there sign up with Facebook? Sign too? up with Facebook, sign up with yep. Google, or just use your email. Or just use your email yeah. and set up an account. And once you get in there, it's super simple to start logging. And some of that is covered, in, how to log is covered in Ham Radio Basics. So if you have Ham Radio Basics, you'll find out how to log. You come over to World Radio League, bingo, bango, bongo. You're in there, you're logging your contacts, you're looking at your map and seeing where your contacts are going around the world and having a lot of other good times and, and tracking your performance as you go. All right, well, thank you, Professor Jim and for BFR for answering our questions. And for you guys at home, send us more questions. We've got Professor Jim, I've got him locked down here. Yep. He's not going anywhere. So if you have any more questions for Professor Jim, yep, post I will him. ask him. Post them for ham radio prep students, uh, post them in the student success group. For World Radio League users, post them in the community. And I got a few more things. Remember to download the Ham Radio Prep mobile app if you haven't already. It's, it's the best way to study if you're a technician, your general, and your amateur extra. You can track your progress. It's got video lessons. It makes the whole thing a breeze and really easy to do. And go to worldradioleague.com and sign up for your free account so you can start logging your contacts, POTA activations, contesting, all those good things. And I'm James, November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima. Talk to you guys soon. I'm Jim N4 BFR. See you soon. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.